The next case is a eight-year-old woman followed for a Barrett's esophagus since 2017. The controlled gastroscopy performed this year showed a Barrett's esophagus of C11M13 with a second Paris to be lesion 24 to 27 centimeters from the incisors with a mucosal and vascular pattern suggesting dysplasia. This lesion was resected by piecemeal EMR and the uh, histopathological results came back positive for high-grade dysplasia. She is scheduled today for gastroscopy and radiofrequency of the remaining Barrett's esophagus. Thank you very much, uh, Anna Maria, for the, introducing the case. So uh, welcome to the room. So you can see we already did some preparatory work. So we uh, cleaned everything. We used uh, uh, mucomist or lesomicil, and we already placed a guide wire in place. So the plan is to do circumferential RV in this long segment Barrett's. Obviously, you need to double check that there are no visible lesions. And we had a little bit of a surprise here when we came here. Yeah, exactly. Um, Pierre, where you can see, uh, you would say, oh, oh, this is wrong, there's a visible lesion. But actually, there was a clip in here, a hemoclip, after the EMR that we tried to remove. I think the patient bleeds uh, after the EMR and was rescheduled for emergent uh, endoscopy, and they have to put a clip. And this is probably the clip still in, what's still in yeah. place. Yeah. So remove it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to remove it and not to put the coagulation or the uh, electrocurrent current over it because we don't know how how deep the the, the heat can go than yeah. everything. So uh, you can see here where there's little uh, mucosal laceration due to removal of the clip, but that's not a contraindication for the ablation. And actually, I think there is still dysplasia here, but it's quite flat. So you can see that with these high uh, definition endoscopes, I mean, you get a real nice view. Uh, and if we switch to the uh, BLI image, you can see that, well, there is some uh, variability in the pit pattern and the vascular pattern, for instance, here at one o'clock or here. But no, it's actually more uniform. It's not like a, a real area that you can delineate like a typical lesion, but I think especially here at the 12 o'clock position, the pit pattern is a bit different from the one that we can see here at six o'clock, right? Here's the top of the uh, gastric folds. And one of the challenging in, challenges in this patient is actually what you see here. So I'm curious to see if we're going to go ahead because very often you underestimate the typical peptic structure at the top of such a long Barrett. In this case, it's, it's 14 centimeters in total. Uh, there's also uh, a, not, maybe a little bit sign of ongoing reflux here. Not sure. Uh, but anyway, I mean, the chances of having a complete remission in such a long Barrett is going to be a little bit lower probably around 80%, 75% in comparison to the overall outcome of 95%, 90% that we usually see. You need to take this into consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you can show the catheter, yeah. Pierre. And so I'll you will prepare. remove the, yeah. the scope now, and we will be ready to insert this catheter. Ah. This one is a, uh, based on a balloon, which will be ah. inflated, but this pedal. So we have a pedal over there uh, with two pedals. The, 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 blue one is the one we use to uh, make the RFA itself and the grey one is the one which is used with uh, this uh, type of catheter. So you can see here when I will inflate, when I will push, you will have a f the image that would happen into the uh, patient esophagus. So this is the, the maximum size of insufflation but in fact this intelligent uh, balloon will measure the pressure and will be able to be adapted to the size of the esophagus. And this is probably, you know that already, uh, the uh, uh, nice uh, improved in the, this kind of device. Before, uh, the, the first generation, we had to use a um, sizing balloon before to choose the, the, the balloon that we will use to burn because it has to be adapted to the lower size of the esophagus. But here, even if uh, uh, with an esophagus of different size, I mean, with a narrowing uh, at one place, we are able to adapt it, or the, the balloon is able to adapt it itself uh, to the anatomy. So Raf is uh, introducing the scope uh, to be aligned with the uh, catheter, and you have to know the endoscopic image probably, yes? Okay. Um, so one of the things to remember, uh, Pierre, when we have the strictures, that sometimes you will have a skipped area there, and we need to accept that. 
uh, we will try to ablate everything, so we start a little bit more proximal. You need to identify also the area of ablation, so there's a plastic part here which doesn't ablate, and then you see clearly the electrodes, so that's the ablation part. So we can go back here and we see that uh, it will be quite difficult to pass along uh, the, the catheter if you do it like this, So, but we will, don't, we will not do this now. So, But when the shaft is only there, I think it will be feasible. So usually we try to ablate one centimeter proximal and see what happens. So I think, I estimate that the size we will have here will be quite limited. Uh, uh, so we, we put, as you said, we uh, switch on the balloon in sufflation by hitting the gray paddle. There you go. And we, you see it automatically inflates and we only have a small size, which is indicated 18 millimeters. Yeah. We can have a sound that we can go ahead and then we push the blue paddle and immediately you will have all the energy delivered. What we can expect is that because of the fact that we have the restriction at the top, that we will not have the full four centimeter ablation distally. Okay. Right? An important issue, what you see now on the screen, I really want to stress that is sometimes the balloon doesn't really deceflate. And, so and then you need to really turn the, uh, the system clockwise, always clockwise. Always clockwise yeah. to, to avoid reshape, reshape the balloon yeah. over the catheter and be able to insert it more distally. Yeah. And this is an important thing. So if you look at here, you can see this, uh, this rim of the electrode, which is actually quite sharp. It's a bit like a razor blade if you don't take care. Uh -huh. So when we come back later and we know that there is a structure, there are two things important to avoid complications. First thing is that we make sure that the shape of the balloon is again like this, so it's a small. Before to remove it. Before to remove it, that we don't have any resistance. And if you, there is resistance, you have to come back. Or also again, twist clockwise. So that's very important because there have been some lacerations due to uncareful removal of them. So we twist again a little bit uh, clockwise uh, here. Yeah, okay. Perfect. There's a pretty good amount of evidence that shows that you can really reach uh, very high levels of complete eradication of uh, vitesnal metaplasia. Yeah? Yes. So you, I mean, in the Euro 2 trial, but obviously not all patients went into Euro 2 trial. There was a limit in the size of the, of the barriers. I think it was 12 centimeters. So this patient would have not have qualified and uh, also the number of resections. But besides the size, the patient would have qualified. And we know that the chances are smaller that we get a full ablation, uh, but it's still feasible. Eh? We have also very good response sometimes in these long segment barriers. You come back and next time you, you watch them, you have, they have like more than 90% regression. So again, you, you look for the distal margin of the ablation here, and then you take like half a centimeter of ablation zone back. You pull back the scope with your fingers, fix everything to the bite block, and then we go for the third ablation zone. So we probably need four in this long segment barracks. We can look through the balloon like this, wait for full inflation, and now we're actually at 27 millimeters, which is 10 millimeters more yeah. than at the top. So this clearly illustrates the advantage of this New catheter. balloon, yeah. well, new, not really new now. It's but not new, but I think in the past we would have been stuck with the 80 millimeter balloon, and then you have a poorer apposition in this rest, more yeah. uh, uh, dilated area. So we tur turn it again. Always when you turn, you have to come back. And I always like to have that wire at the three o'clock position. So you can just twist it a little bit more. Excellent. So the very, very nicely demonstrated, guys. Uh, thank you very much.